Stuart, uh, can you first of all explain a little bit about Project Brave for us? Yeah, Project Brave is the title that we've given to um, our focus on trying to develop elite young players who will ultimately pull on the blue shirt and play for Scotland. Uh, we have a number of academies across Scotland um, linked to our football clubs playing in the, the SPFL and what we're trying to do is to work with those clubs to develop more, better players for the future success of the Scotland teams. You mentioned that the pathway is broken after the age of 17. Can you explain a little bit about why it works up till then and why it's broken after that? Well, when you look at the performance of our under-17 Scotland team, you can see that we are doing exceptionally well. We've qualified for the last three European Championships under the UEFA banner and we're currently ranked fifth in Europe out of 55 countries. Um, last Friday night we played Montenegro in the current elite round of the Under-17 Championships and we beat them 6-1 and we are very close to qualifying for a fourth successive European final. So clearly up to the age of 17 it's working and it's working well. Beyond the age of 17 we're struggling to see players um, deliver delivered by their clubs to the first team and pulling on their own first team shirt and clearly we're struggling to get players coming through who are pulling on the Scotland shirt for the, the men's A squad and we need more of those players in order to perform at the highest level. So we need to do something with those players between the ages of 17 to 21 to get them playing more game time at, at the highest possible levels they can in order to be uh, a lead player for the future. So you've identified the problem, so what is the solution that you've identified? Uh, there are a variety of solutions. In reality there's, there's not a magic bullet for, uh, for Project Brave. Um, so the first area is to work with the clubs to refresh the academy system. And currently we have 29 academies in Scotland. We're investing in all 29. Um, investing in something like two and a half thousand players. Our proposal is to try and reduce the number of centrally funded academies to a maximum of 16, to focus on all of our resources on half the players, so around 1,200 players across Scotland. We also look to focus on coach development, so instead of focusing just on the education of, of, of coaches and producing certificates, we're focusing on coach mentoring and coach development to work with those young players to try and get the best out of them. Um, we're looking to see more players go on loan to try and get a more uh, flexible use of the loan system so players get the chance perhaps to go down a division and have more game time every week with um, the first team of a club to be challenged and to be uh, developed playing alongside men. We're also looking to have uh, a greater uh, involvement with competition so we're looking to relaunch the Reserve League and we're looking to set up an under 18s competition to complement um, the, uh, the reserve team uh, system that's going to be in place. So lots of ideas and initiatives but, but clearly it's, um, it's going to take time for us to deliver that. Actions and initiative versus delivery. Where are we in terms of Project Rave being less of a concept and more of a, a structured deliverable plan with, with outcomes? Yeah, Project Brave has been um, the subject of a working party uh, that was set up last April under the leadership of Alistair Gray from a company called Renaissance & Co who um, worked with us on our original performance strategy. Alistair and the team, which is made up of a number of our senior club representatives from director of football level down to, to coach level, um, they have come up with a series of recommendations which have been out to consultation with all of the clubs in the uh, SPFL Academy system and it was signed off by our board of directors in December last year. So we're in the process of rolling that out to our clubs and the first um, action will be a bid document which clubs will see and they will have to put a declaration of interest forward to the Scottish FA by the end of March um, this, this year, so about two weeks time. Now you mentioned investing double the money in half, half the players, that's been an initiative that's been floating around for, for a number of years now. Why is it different today than it was, I think, in 2011 when we first heard that? Well, clearly we've, um, we've not been able to, see, to deliver the success that we would like. We don't have that pipeline of players at 17 
year old plus who are coming through to the 19s to the 21s and then into the A squad you know we're seeing success to the age of 17 but our 21s haven't qualified for a final for some time now and we know that our A squad is not performing to the level that that we all want so the pathway is not delivering we only have 17 players currently playing in the English Premier League at the highest level and there's only around half of those starting for their teams every week so we don't have that gene pool to, to pull from so we need really to be ruthless and to be brave and focus our resources on the very best players in the very best academies and if we don't do that we're just going to continue to see more of the same I'm afraid. And what are your key performance indicators for this then? How, how are you going to judge it as a success? Well we've developed a, a concept called measurable performance outcomes or MPOs to give it its acronym. MPOs um, is the awarding of points to academies who develop homegrown talent so those clubs that play players in the first team, those clubs who are successful at having a player called up for a Scotland team, whether that's a youth team or a, an A squad, um, those um, clubs that put players out on loan or who take loanees in, and those, player, those clubs who develop coaches, they will be given points and we will have a league table of clubs ranked in points order and we will um, provide further funding uh, based on the success of the academy system in the criteria that, that I've just laid out. So it's um, performance related payments is a, a good way of describing it and that's one real measure of success. Now that's the administration, that, that's the man with a suit uh, saying that and I think these are, these are key uh, indicators and that they're very worthwhile. What about the fans, the guys with the shirts? So what, how, how do they judge success? Well ultimately they judge success by seeing winning Scotland teams and when you look at our strategy, uh, Scotland United a 2020 vision, um, the number one objective in Scotland United is to see the A squad qualify for a major tournament and it's that elusive target that we, we know means so much to the fans. You know it's, um, it's almost um, uh, well, it's 20 odd years since we qualified back in, in 1998 and on that basis you know we really need to try and do something about that the fans I don't think will rest until they see Scotland team qualifying for a major tournament but you know maybe the halfway house is to get the 21s there get the 17s there again get the 19s there and then up, hopefully get the men's air squad to Hampden Park in 2020 when we're playing in the European Championships well, good luck with Project Brave. You're here today at the Supporters Direct Scotland Conference. What do you think of the conference today and, and I suppose the, the general uh, aims and objectives of, of the movement? It's a very uh, worthwhile initiative. I applaud Supporters Direct Scotland for putting this event on today. Uh, it's been a good attendance, some really uh, interesting speakers. I uh, particularly enjoyed the presentation from the Foundation of Hearts um, and the journey that uh, Hearts as a club has been on um, since administration a few years ago. Um, I'm really proud of what Anne Budge has achieved as a, a, an owner at Hearts and she's worked very closely with the foundation to get the club on, on the right track so the learnings from Hearts has been very well received uh, today indeed so you know a lot, lot of opportunity for fans to engage um, and I would encourage as many as possible to, to join the bandwagon and to, to sign up with Supporters Direct Scotland.